Welcome to Lynn Cullen Live, talk radio without the static. Email your questions and comments to lynn at pghcitypaper.com. And now your host, Lynn Cullen. Hey, hey, hey. So happy to see you today. That rhymed. <laughs> I got Sally Wigan here with me. She's the she's the woman of the hour, of the week, of the month. When's it going to end, Sally? Like an ice cream well, yeah, but when's it going to end, this... It, it, this farewell me, it, tour. It, it'll be like a cliff. You go <laughs> off a cliff and it's done. It's and over. People will say, who are you? Who was that? Who are you? Yeah. Yeah. Are you enjoying all of this validation and valediction? Is that a different word? Mm, validation. You know, like that. I, I, mean, I don't know. Let's not get go down that rabbit hole because then we'll be talking about it for. Okay, I know that's true, but I, I, I do mean, that. Um, is it? I mean, it's gratifying. Do I enjoy it? Of course, but it's gratifying. Uh, Don't start the. Hu- no, 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 no. It, it, it's it's upsetting. Some. No, no. It really What's is upsetting? upsetting. Because you look at it and someone says something, and then you go, No, that's just not true. You don't know what a horrible person I am. Um, um, I got really. I just the other day I got angry at someone. Uh, who was having some trouble, and then I realized, oh, my goodness, you shouldn't be angry about that. That poor person is having trouble. And so uh, so I'm really a horrible person. Yes, but she is. This just in, Sally Wiggum, <laughs> despite all of the things you're reading about her, her charitable instincts. How she's got, no, he, she is absolutely a bitch. I mean, she is <laughs> a she-wolf. She is I one of the more despicable human beings I've I had, have ever I've met. Had, I've had ex-boyfriends call me that. A what? A bitch? Yeah. Well, sure, what ex-boyfriends call any yeah, woman. Yeah, but they, they were right. Hey, you've been on Broadway. In Broadway you got to get I'm close. sorry. All right. I'm sorry. Right. Here. Well, I get... You know, okay, you asked me a question. Yes, it, it, it is validating. At the same time, it's humbling. And at the same time, I... I, I, I I have really low self-esteem, so I don't believe this. I, my, my tendency is this isn't true, and it was done for me by television. It was done for me by WTAE. I have to tell you, WTAE put me in a position. I was an anchor who was given a position as a co-host of a sports show. Yeah. A lot of people didn't know that that was what I wanted to do. The only reason I got into the business, that I had studied it, that I had been a coach, that I had been a competitive athlete, that I had married a former football player and professional baseball player. An asshole. Not that that makes you knowledgeable about sports. I'm not saying that. But I have to say that had a huge impact uh, on, on who I became. So it was other people who took a chance. And then Joe DiNardo, Billy Hillgrove, those guys taught me about the importance of giving back to the community. I think I might have done it anyway because the first time I got involved with a nonprofit was when I talked about in Birmingham having been had domestic violence in my life. And that was that was not here, it was in Birmingham. And so and that led me down. So that wasn't the station that did that. But all of who I am is because of other people. Well, it's because next. and that's why I don't. That's why. I, I, but you know what? Don't don't you do get addi- you, did, you know what? You know this. You do get addicted to the adulation that comes with being on in that box. In yeah. that box, you do get it's addicted. It's nice to be to walking it. down the street and to have somebody say, "Oh, I love mm-hmm. your work," or something yeah. like that. Because people who do more important work, but aren't recognizable, they don't get that kind of act of validation. Uh, on a on a daily basis. On the other hand, when you're walking down the street and you just assume nobody recognizes you and you are recognized, that's a negative of being a public figure. Mm. It can be yeah because either uh, oftentimes or. I don't uh, wash my hair often enough. <laughs> I used to be astounded. I have to tell you. Did I ever tell you this? <laughs> and I did because wear makeup did, and I, I wore the same tell clothes you this. over and over I again. I have to tell you what a woman at the drugstore on oh, Highland no. said to me. No. And this is where our house is now on Highland. There used to be a drugstore there. Yeah, I remember. I don't know which, what kind it was. But that I went there, and you must have gone there. Maybe it's when you were living in that area, too. And um, this would be in the 80s. And I went in to. Get I wasn't the main anchor. One of the main no, anchors. No, it doesn't then. matter. Yeah, I it went does. In, I went in. One they'll be day. kinder when you are. I went in. One day and she said something about Sally Wigan was in here the other day. <laughs> I didn't recognize her. Why? 
her hair was hanging in like these greasy strings. She had no makeup. I I said, well, (laughs) and I, I remember thinking at the time that I was amazed that you would go out not looking like Sally Wigan. You know what I mean? Because I felt such pressure. I wasn't an anchor, but I was... I never walked out the door, even to take the garbage out, without putting, you know. No, you did. Sure. You did put a lot of makeup on. Not a lot. You you always went out. No, you did. You always went out fixed up. Right, because you do. I was because you're well, fixed you're, up now. Well, I yeah, fixed no up more too. fixed. You're fixed. I fixed up, up too. You no, got I mascara up. on. I don't. I do. Well, I I, I like mascara. I don't. <laughs> my drips. It ends up under my. But since I've gotten old and dried up, it doesn't drip as much. That's a a positive of getting old when you you're, you don't have as much oil in your skin. I I can wear mascara now. I just well, if forget. you get it burned off and punctured enough, then it kind of makes you have more oil. Sa- Sally's had peels. That's what you mean. You're, you have your face chemically burned off. Not anymore. Not I'm anymore. glad to now hear I it. do. I, it's just a the little like. But see, you wouldn't do that if you weren't an anchor woman. I mean, stop and think what women. All right, I'm going to. I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm going to say something that I I've never said even to my family to my sister. I said I only did this because of my job, and I did, and it 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 it, it actually va- it, it, at a really difficult time. It, 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 it put me in a good place because I had done this. And my agent said that because you've done this. When things started to go bad, I was in a good place. We're not going to go into the details of that. But, and so when someone would say, well, you're going to stop doing this. And I said, I did this for my job. Now I'm doing it. <laughs> for your so, vanity. No. For your, it's vanity. So I can land a guy. A younger one. I am so <laughs> sick and tired of your obsession with getting a guy. No, it's oh, not. Jesus, when, no, 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 not the, I, I just still would love to get married again. I would. Because the first time went so well. <laughs> Jesus. Well, there was well, an eight-year one that went okay. But a the relationship. Love of my life, and that yeah, was not going to work yeah. because of the age difference. But really, I mean... Come on, you've lived most of your life without. A, I, a I have to tell. I have and, to tell you. You. During the period after my divorce, how often would I call you and, uh, and other people about messed up relationships to the point where you wouldn't talk to you me You know what? Anymore. No, I wouldn't. You, wouldn't you know what? I, you Sally wanted an intervention. No, I have to tell you. You wanted I would literally, an intervention. I would put the phone down <laughs> and like go and, and do other stuff and <laughs> come back and you were so, hey, you couldn't get a word in edgewise, but I'm better now. You, I, I think I'm, yeah, I'm better I, now. I, I think you are. A I want a I'm, lot of therapy. I want to. I want to have some fun with you today, because a lot. Oh, by the way, oh, excuse me. I, I touched her breast. I mean, yeah, so watch I, out. I, I was trying for your heart. I'm sorry. My okay. bison. My pink bison. There. That's great. Where'd you get that? You know, my sister and brother-in-law had a bison ranch in Maine. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, that's years. pretty cool. I love bison. They jump very high. They can jump. Do you know a, ma- that a bull bison can jump six feet straight up? Straight and, up. And come yeah. after you. But to jump over a fence, you have to have high fencing for bison. Well, you know what? I, they shouldn't be in fences, but I love bison. I was chased by a herd of cows once, and I was stunned at how fast. Dairy cows. Bunch of friggin' Holsteins were. Turns out they were what the farmer said, freshening. Which is they were ready to be be bred. There you go. And I guess they their hormones were, yeah, were up. And <laughs> since they, I have none left, I can't imagine <laughs> what that's like. Oh God, I have to tell you. Here's the thing. Are okay. you going to ask the questions no, on your page? No, no, because I just thought of something about the pros and cons of being recognizable. I had <laughs> a, a, a experience yesterday because you mentioned hormones, and then I. I had to go to a, the gynecologist. Now it was a real quick visit for a little quick thing that had to be done, and um, I said to the people when I made the appointment, "I don't care. Anybody can do this." So they gave me doctor, and it was a guy. I have not been to a male <laughs> gynecologist in forty, forty-five years. I don't even know how male gynecologists stay in business. 
because why would a woman want to go to a male gynecologist? They don't understand. They never felt. They don't, you know, whatever. So I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to a guy. I was so freaked out. But I went in, and, you know, they... It's just a humiliating experience, you know, you're, 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 and this guy finally walks in. He walks in and he goes, Lynn Collins. <laughs> <laughs> That's so humiliating. I know. Spread him. Yeah. Oh, please. Oh, wait, uh, no, 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 no. This no, is no. what, this is what, Jesus. you do tend to be a bit graphic, too graphic. But here's where you wouldn't want to be um, recognized, right? Well, you know what? You just accept. And he said you're you just, on just, television. Just, just think. Just think. I mean, you're better than a cadaver. Well, that's all. I mean, they. They. I mean, they study on women cadavers. I mean, I give. I give him credit. Maybe he's trying to to be in touch with his feminine side by being a gynecologist. <laughs> I think that's cool that, that there well, are. I think it was cool who, too. It was very yeah, good. He did it. He did it. And um, like, you know, listen. That, I. I just. I just. I'm get. I. I'm, I've signed up for six months of personal training so that I can relearn how to use weights and I want to get in shape because I'm going to be wearing shorts and a bathing suit in the end of March and I, I want to look okay and so he said do you want a woman trainer or a man and I, I didn't even hesitate I said a guy dude I want a dude gee <laughs> see I would say the exact opposite no I want a guy why because he knows what I should look like what I should look like, and he will make me... How does a woman me... not know what you should look like? What? A woman might want me to be healthier, but I want to look better. Jesus, you are fucked up. <laughs> you can't talk that way I while I'm can't here. I can, No, you cannot talk There's that no way There's no federal here. communications commission around here, babe. Okay, so name all the dogs you have had um, since mm. you've come to Pittsburgh in chronological order. Go. Um, Miho. Miho was in... Um, no, just do the names. Miho. She was in Akita. I, I remember. She was you don't a, have to... Akita. Miho. But I was in, still in hey, Japanese. Hey, I just do the name. That's not fair. She can't do it. I can't I do it. Okay, Miho. Miho. Misha was a Borzoi. Uh, uh, Sheena was a Scottish deer hound. She was a puppy. Misha, I sort of rescued. I'm sorry I have to say that. He was a Borzoi that I kind of rescued. Will you just All right, do the right. name? And then, and, then, and then Kino. Kino was a protection dog. He was a German German Shepherd. I'm going to say that. You cannot stop me. Okay, so all and the wait, rest wait, are German protection dogs. No, no, and then, and then, and then uh, um, um, God. Um, oh, God. Kino. And then um, um, I, I sort of raised Taz. He was my boyfriend's Australian Shepherd. He lived with me, so that counts. Taz lived with me. And then, and then there was Reed. He was a, a, a Scottish Deerhound puppy that was. He had Marfan syndrome, they think, at the special. How the Ohio hell State. could a dog have Marfan? So syndrome? people would call what him is, Abe Lincoln <laughs> because he was really tall and he had big it, feet. <laughs> and and he and I found a home for him because in my protection right. dog, he kept bonding the protection. All dog. right, you're. Well, good. Wait a minute, no. Yeah, and then I had. Uh, and then I had uh, um, Francis. Francis was a German Shepherd who was imported from Germany. And uh, not Francis, excuse me, Emma. Emma, she was gorgeous. Most beautiful dog I've ever had. Emma. And then there was Norris von Ortenberg. He was from Germany, too. He came from Germany. And I, I bought him while I was sitting in a, 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 a ski lodge in Colorado. And then without even having seen him, I just saw a picture of him. And then he was the second protection dog. Uh, and, then, and then there was Francis. And Francis was the daughter of Kino. And she was retired. She was a brood bitch. She had been a Schutzhund, but then she became a brood bitch and then and then I so I took her when she was old and so I ended up and then Francis was the one who's in the euthanasia piece that's online that I did okay okay UTA. and then we're near and now the end. And, now, and then I and have the two that barked at me out here and I have Quinn Quinn is also a retired brood bitch and she was with <laughs> Norris and then now I have and he's an uber uber Protector. Protector, yeah. yeah. He competed on the U.S. German Shepherd Schutzen team in Europe. And what? his name is Kent von Aurora Tufelblut. And Tufelblut <laughs> means devil's blood. And he's in a car and shaking the car. And he barked at me on yeah. the way. I, I well, walked to work. The others never work. used to bark unless well, yeah. they needed to. I'm and walking to I can work tell this one, on Smithfield. I can tell this one. And and all of a sudden, attack someone. Yeah, all of a sudden, from inside a car, I can't see him. Woof. Well, I mean, it was like a kill you, kill you. Mm. And I thought, I he's th really sweet. Yeah, right. And I thought, this has to be Sally's dog. 
But you have to understand why wasn't. I have these dogs. I understand. There, there have been some legal stalkers. Issues. Does, we don't stuff. have to go into. No, we don't. Been a couple. Well, it was pretty good. I think you remembered most of them. I remembered all yeah. of them. And then I had little Smokey when I was little. When I was a, <laughs> Smokey was a dachshund. Okay. That I made jump out a window <laughs> because I wanted to see him jump like a German Shepherd, and I made him jump out the window. My mother was so mad because his little chin hit the ground. She says, "What are you doing?" And I said, "I said I just wanted to see him jump like the dogs do on TV." <laughs> Oh, and then I used to put a rubber band around his nose so I could... Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> you know what? That is so mean. My brother used to do that to the dog. It's awful. Uh, just ridiculous. I was like, I wanted him to do a trick. Anyway, Did okay. you pull the wings off a fly? No! All right, I'm just saying. Some troubling little red flags there, Sally. <laughs> I catch moths and I take them outside. Good. Okay. Um, you know what's funny? All these pieces that they're writing about you now... Uh, the last one I read uh, said that Sally is a very private person. <laughs> Who said that? Well, didn't you read it? The one in the the reporter said oh, wait. Sally's you a private what? person, and then wait. went on to talk about. <laughs> wait, I know what it was. That was the dru- oh, one. she admits she was an alcoholic. She's well, been you abu- know what? abusive relationships. She's this. She's one, that. One she's a, but, yeah, 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 right. <laughs> Right. My yes. marriage. And I'm thinking, how do you write that and then say to yourself, what are you keeping from us? No, what I, mean, I, like, meant, what I meant person. by that, I don't, you know, I have mentioned I'm a cardiac survivor. I've not gone in on social media. I have not gone into detail on how serious my cardiac issues are. Sally was emceeing an event downtown and I she stroked a, out in no, the middle of No, I it. had a TIA. That's a stroke. It's a mini stroke. Okay. Um, but I have not, I have not gutted myself about everything that's happened to me on social media. I've not done that. That's what I meant. And I was, you know, and I didn't talk about people like, I was very quiet about an eight-year relationship because A, back then, if you were dating someone or living with someone who was, did I just say that? on? Oh. Oh, do you mean that people would be shocked to hear that you were living with someone out of wedlock? <laughs> But anyway, that oh, was, I'm sorry, we can't hit. You knew I, this. I you knew this well, person. You knew this person. I and yeah, he was an I, amazing guy. Yes, and I screwed that yes. one up. I did. Yeah, she did. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't listen to me. I know. I know. I know. Couldn't get a word in edgewise, Wigan. But anyway, I didn't talk about, for instance, people like him because we worked together, and so I was very quiet about things, and <clears throat> and so I and so all of a sudden. <laughs> You know what, when you have someone like Bradley Cooper or uh, people like that talk about being oh, addicts, yeah. yes. I think, you know, it's time. I need to talk, uh, just say this, and, and it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's a disease. Hey, this is an idea I had you coming You used to in know here. me when I drank heavily. <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> let's not go there. No, let's I not go remember, there. No. I remember you, f- never mm. mind. No, Let's not, not go there. there. No. <laughs> I still drink heavily. And I get a little upset sometimes. I know. So, listen. Chris says um, <laughs> that we're hilarious. And they would Sally come on once a month? I had a better idea. What? I think you should do a show. No, I don't want to. I don't want that responsibility. I don't. Not at least for the first year. And, okay. And, and the thing well, is, if you don't act now, you lose you, you lose the window where people still know who you are. But I oh, really but, don't. Bull, that's bull. But I really don't care. I. You I'm know what? It, it, our friend Kit is right. I, I I don't mind being a guest. I don't want the responsibility of, of a show of my own. And then it would just compete with your show. So I don't want to do that. No, I wouldn't mind. I City. don't want to do. I, 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 I I'm already s- saying it. I don't want to do that. I would like to do pieces for other organizations, but I, because of my contract, I have a non-compete, so I can't do pieces for other broadcast entities for a year. This is not a broadcast entity. I know that. I know that. That's why I can say fuck. I please, please. Am I yelling? I'm yelling. Please. No, what you're doing that's annoying I mean, me I is you're a... banging on the table, and every time you to- do in my headphones. It, do I? Now, what is it saying? Are you having a stroke? 
No, no, it does. This new Apple Watch. Is she has an Apple Watch. She she slammed her uh, hand down before the show, and her Apple Watch said, "You appear to have taken a fall." Yeah. Is that what it says? <laughs> well, because think, if I fell, my hands would go. Poof. On well, the yeah, but it was wrong. You had not taken and so, a fall. And, 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 and it's, 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 do you want me to do it now? Really what? hard? See if it does Okay, it. go ahead. Go ahead. I didn't do it. Oh, oh well. See, it doesn't do it all the time. That hurt. Oh. I guess it's, yeah. Can, let's do something that's grown up right now. <laughs> because uh, we certainly are not being grown up. Okay, let's, let's. Ask some questions from that little piece of paper. Okay, I thought. So last night I, I watched this Paris to Pittsburgh thing. Did you know no. about that? No. Uh, National Geographic had a one-hour documentary titled Paris to Pittsburgh. And it... It's about climate change. Yes. Why, don't I, why didn't I know about this? I don't know. And it, Where can I see this? Yeah, uh, on demand, National Geographic uh, channel. Paris you know, I travel with the Lindblad National Geographic. And yeah, I, yeah. Well, big, okay. We had a big, I actually, had a big lecture I bailed that. out on it about halfway in because it turned into too much of a, I don't know, polemic. And I, you know, I feel like, okay, okay, all right. Uh, it's funded by Bloomberg. Wow. And Bloomberg introduces Why it, didn't I know about this? and they start with Trump saying, you know, yeah, pulling yeah, out yeah. of the Paris Accords, yeah. and saying, "I was elected to, you know, be president of Pittsburgh. You know, Pittsburgh elected me, not the people in Paris." And then, of course, Peduto saying, <laughs> "Excuse me," and um, so they go immediately to Peduto. Peduto's in it, and blah 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 blah. But Is I was on the thinking, National Geographic Channel. Yeah. So here's what I wanted to say to you because Did you Sal guys know about it? I'm talking about to the other women in here. Did you guys know about it? Oh. Sally here. Can Does, I can I see it on demand? Yes. Okay. I think it got Did someone write that down so I'll remember. I think it. it got boring. Tell your fucking watch. Stop it. Well, isn't doesn't she do that kind of thing too? You say, uh, tell me to watch national Yeah, Does actually it? it would. Yeah, okay. But I don't well, do that. fine. Okay. Um so one of the things, in, Sally does a ton of travel, uh, uh, like uh, to exotic locales. Um, well, they're, they're, they're well, environmentally re important right. locales. Right. I mean, so uh, your last being down into... Falkland Islands and South Georgia, which are being affected by climate change. Okay. So one of the things that I learned very early into this documentary which blew me away. I should have realized it, and you'll say, oh, yeah, right, of course. But they were talking about the fact that Miami Beach and that whole area of you, Florida, it will truly be uninhabitable. You didn't know that? Well, I knew it because of the incro uh, very soon. Yeah, However, it's, it's be everybody's soon. sending you the damn documentary. I'll forward it to you. So, Sally. Kid just sent me. Sent me. See, every... She's God got the her. documentary. It's okay. No, but what they said Kitty's is an we're all aware. <laughs> I know. We're all aware. I did not mean to interrupt. That was so rude. I'm sorry. I apologize. We are. Um, I've lost my train. <laughs> oh. um, we're so all aware. we're aware. I mean, there's like flooding uh, constantly in the streets of Miami during, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, um, and they say when people think, and this is what I've always thought, that these coastal areas, that people are not going to be able to live there. You got to move, move in. It's not because of the fact that the ocean will come over the beaches and uh, into the streets. It's because the ocean will come underneath into the aquifers that give you f your fresh water supply. So that in Florida, it's what's going to happen to the Everglades, which is the major source of drinking water for southern Florida. It's going to 
become brackish. Well, they'll have to desalinize it. They'll have to come. Up with, no. They'll have to come up with the ability to desalinize. They're going to have to move. Yeah. Out. Yeah. So anyway, just wanted to say that it, 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 it's it's sort of mind blowing that people can continue this um, denial when it's so obvious. Anyone who buys a house in Miami Beach right now is an idiot. Okay. <laughs> Hey, you know what? There was a there was a there was a stud, study recently. There was an article um, I just read about why it is that people refuse to believe that climate change is real. When when you know why? Because they haven't as advanced as, beyond being a child who goes like this. You can't see me. I, 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 I can't hear me. It's a little bit more complex than that. Nah. It has to do with how we developed as a species. Uh, how, how we've evolved and, and one of the things why are you looking at pictures of dogs look how cute <laughs> somebody's dachshund look how cute this is sent to you by Kristen she said hi Lynn and Sally wonderful show so much fun here's a picture of my two dachshunds dachshund uh, we had, I had a dachshund Patton and MacArthur but you know what mine was a standard size now they all have miniatures I'm not I don't know why everybody's into little bitty things I like big things I, li I like I medium. like medium my favorite my favorite species are Elephants and whales, big, big things. Uh, let me say, let me go back to this. And what it said is that one of the things that when we started to evolve as a species, when we're hunter and gatherers, a threat that was imminent that you could right. see, right. we could deal with that. Something that's in advance is something that we still have trouble we, with we because have trouble yeah, with yeah we really because, do because it's it's, it's amorphous. not immediate it's amorphous yeah. and it's and it's so, not immediate and and it's easier to believe uh, if I can't see it if it's not affecting yeah. me individually then I'm just going to go on with my life because that's right it's, it's easier that way right. until until but there's something it's called a your, brain but see with this with this there is the potential to destroy this planet so it's not livable and then when you add the fact that the you know that there's the threat of nuclear holocaust always there in in some way and you add that let me tell a story really i'm not going to say who the person is and this was years this was 5 years ago at somebody i know uh he was in a very high position with a huge corporation one of the you know best known corporations not best known but was a huge corporation it's he oversaw energy use and it was someone I would describe politically as as a moderate, tending toward Conservative. Republican. Yeah, yeah, tending toward Republican. Uh, the Republicans that used <laughs> no, I'm not making a political <laughs> statement. There no. used to be a different type of Republican. Yeah, same. Yeah, no, I'm not going to say I, that. Just, I'm saying it. There you are change, just go. The changes happen. That's what yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. but I remember him saying to me, I asked him, this is five or six years ago. Is it? too late and he looked at me and he said yes yeah I said you're kidding me he said and so I've heard some people want to write books maybe it might be a hundred years from now you know it could be that the only someone if you're writing a, 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 a dystopian future and I just I mean a dystopian Novel. novel, not a future, because that is a bad future. It's redundant. Um, Africa is the Sahara Desert, the whole continent. Yeah, because of overgrazing. Yeah, because of too much cattle. Cattle are cattle produce more methane, methane which is is worse for the atmosphere. That's right. Than our cars. I know. Cattle <laughs> farts. Yeah, blame it on the cattle, not I'm our. I'm not sure it's it farts. It's it is farts. No, I I heard that it's actually their burps. Their burps when they chew either their end. It's well, whatever. And burps. But anyway, and then and then that the, the whole East Coast is gone, and and the Middle East is also a desert. The Gobi Desert is expanded, and that the only place that's livable. This is a, is a novel, a possible novel is that Pittsburgh. people have talked about writing. No, Canada is the only place that's oh livable. Oh God, get there fast. And and people would say, well, the, 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 these things have happened. Like we're in the sixth mass extinction, 
But the right. trouble is, well, except for the asteroid. And the last time I checked, we haven't been hit by an asteroid. No, except that was a, the that, asteroid. That, that was, was the, quick. That happened very quickly. But in most mass extinctions, it happens over a long, long period time. of time. This is happening very quickly, so fast. And it's and but, why would it happen this quickly if there's no asteroid? You say it, because I'm not saying it. Why would it happen this quickly if there's no asteroid? Or something like that. Some 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 because natural occurrence. God wants us dead. No. What is it you didn't want to say? Because of climate change. No, because of well because, because of Oh, I'm failing this test. What? Be People. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But I mean, that's, I mean, I mean that's the th that it, these are the theories that it that this is that this is people now there are people who don't believe who believe in climate change but they believe it's something that's happening cyclical and and scientists will say it looks like it is mostly people but they won't say it definitively although there are people who are saying it definitively <laughs> now. Well, okay wait Mike in DC says I heard people are watching you in DC You're important. Important. Sally, I get calls from Dubai. You do? <laughs> <laughs> I've been in Dubai. Well, I've been in the airport. <laughs> Let's not go down that rabbit hole. All right. Jesus. No, don't do that No, either. no, no, no. Stop swearing. That wasn't swearing. That was blaspheming if you're a Christian. Okay. I ain't. Well, but I am. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I... <laughs> I heard from a friend who worked at Fox that Sally got her first job at TAE because some idiot who was applying for a job there kept her on his audition tape. Management didn't like him, but they were like, who the heck is that woman? Is that true? No, apparently it's not. Actually, no, it is. Well, then why but did you look... But it wasn't an idiot. It was a photographer. Oh, I see. It was okay. a photographer. Okay. So a photographer. On the tape, I was on the tape. Okay, and, and they the said... news director... Put the tape in, looking at a photographer. And he wanted and to know who you were. Yeah. Cool. And he saw me. Pastor Kim says, uh, Lynn and Sally, would you please consider running as the Democratic ticket for president and vice president? The <laughs> yeah, but which one of you us know, is you know, going to be if the we're talking, top of if the we're, ticket? You know, if we're talking about politics, I will no, say we're, that we're, I am becoming, no, I am becoming something that is rare. I'm an independent that is not rare. It's the fastest growing is it really? cohort of American oh, voters. People who are so fed Notice up. Notice I'm looking at the other women like No, like people I don't who trust are you. so fed up with the Democratic Party no, and the Republican. I've always been an the independent. Biggest, the biggest growing, pe more people identify I, as independent. Doing, I, I've never done it because I'm I, that. I've done it because you just, you look at who the person is. Yeah, but when you come to Pittsburgh... You want to register as a Democrat, otherwise you're out of it in terms of any public. You know, everything happens in the primary. I know, that's why. I that's know, why I, I ended up. Uh, I okay. Um, oh, I was telling a story I think on the air the other day, and then I thought, was that an apocryphal tale? And maybe you'll know. Who was it? I think her name was Beverly. Who was it? The lawyer. No, 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 no. no. That said. As an anchor, Generalissimo Francisco Franco has taken a turn for the worse. In fact, he's dead. What? <laughs> She's the one who said a, a Doberman pincer shot a gun or something. Do you remember that? But it was Beverly Byers, right? I just remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Adam, that. Adam had some tapes Adam of her. Lynch had. God, I love, oh, I miss him so oh, much. Yeah. We lost so many amazing people last year. You know what? We, we, um, We're the old ones now. We lost... Um, <laughs> Adam and Joe in the same year. Yeah. Yeah. In the same year. This year. Oh, God. Okay. So <sighs> I was thinking of pros and cons of you not having to work anymore. I'm not. Um, Let's do some pros. Um, you don't have to buy all those stupid anchor clothes. A lot of mine are outdated anyway. I mean, they're they're well, give them away. jackets with jackets with, with with I still have with, some. And I thought, well, I'll with, just have with, these all remade and save money. But that probably you that, don't need them. You don't dress like that. You no, dress but like I, you're I, dressing I, But now. everybody wears dresses now, and everyone wears but, sleeveless dresses. Have you noticed? Even if it's winter on TV, these women have I, on sleeveless dresses. You know why? Because every it's so. St 
stupid. And it's just more of women as window dressing. Well, but, 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 but you have to have it nice is. arms, well, and yeah. that's why I'm so trying they to get all my have nice arms. You know, it, Fox is the one that did this. Where? Oh, my phone is ringing. What? But I forgot to turn this off. All right, well, this is one so, of my best. Do you know this woman? She's one of my best friends. I, I want to get you best. together. You would I like know, her. She's a professor at CMU. I know. She's, she's brilliant. Shut her up. And so. she's beautiful. She, 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 you sat next to her. I at, know. I met her. The, she seemed very nice. She's, I like yeah, her. She's, yeah. And her husband's amazing. I'm sorry. <laughs> you heard, what, what? I, I you, no, I do want, you know what? I was, that's one of the things I want to work on is so that my arm, my arms used to look I could now. It's like ugh. So, I don't. I you I, want Michelle Obama arms? Well, I used to have them. I know you did because you got a lot of. She wears sleeveless muscle. stuff. Okay, but here's the thing. Why I are was, women wearing sleeveless stuff? Because they're showing off their arms. Because that's what TV wants them to do. Because Sally, they're wearing and they're. Sh- Fox did this. So I was looking at a panel. But if Michelle uh, Obama's doing I was it. looking at... She's proud of her arms, too. So it's vanity's part of it, too. Because you can have muscles. You spend all that time working out, and then, you know, you want to you wanna show your arms. But men you don't be- show their arms. What? No, on TV. No, because... <laughs> what world are you living in? <laughs> really? Is I- Jesus Christ. Stop. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. So, I was looking at CNN at a panel. Jake Tapper had a panel. Every person on the panel was a woman, two black women, white women, and I thought, wow, that's really great that it's now not just all men. But then I looked at the women, too. They're all babes. They are all smart as hell, beautiful, and sleeveless, with toned arms, and beautiful legs on the wide shots, and I'm thinking, what the, what the, I'm sorry, there are people like Cokie Roberts, Leslie Stahl, Diane Leslie. Sawyer, uh, oh. you know, uh, 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 Whoopi, Whoopi. Whoopi and and who's the other? Uh, um, oh God, I'm blanking. It doesn't. Joy work. Behar. You know there are people and and. Uh, people and you notice they are grandmothered in, okay? Grandmothered in. I, I you name know what? one under forty. You know what? I I will admit that older men do get more of a pass than older women. They do. They do. But look, Cokie Roberts was a big part of ABC's coverage. Of of um, H. W. Bush, the, the the president. Oh, I'm so sick of that too. Okay, let's not go there. I like. Him. I know we all love him. We. we I met him. him. I really liked him a lot. Okay. Yeah. I, I interviewed him in Birmingham. Did, so did he grope you? No. St- let's not go down there. Okay. All right. We're not going to talk about this. Okay. Uh, here's a con of you not being Sally Wigan anymore. <laughs> There won't be. We do disagree on things, don't we? Yeah, we do. We always have. (laughs) Yes, we always have. There won't be any more free food. I mean, there won't be as much free food. (laughs) (laughs) You know, people. It's true. But but yeah, I'm thinking of the newsroom where people brought food. And I would no. It wasn't just people bringing food. People would have food, and I would. Have you ever seen Wiley Coyote when he stands over, you know, Roadrunner? (laughs) When people would have food, I would, I would, I, I know, did, no. I would stand over their food waiting for them she to would offer take, me something. No, and, and if they didn't, you would take I, I it off it. their plate. And you know, there was one person in my entire career who yelled at me and said, you can't have any of this. Do you remember the late Ron Falvo? He was an editor. He, Are you kidding? He yelled I at love me and him. said, you can't have this. It's mine. This is rude. He's and the only rude. one who said that. Everybody else when has you always let me picking have it. stuff up. up there. I know you've taken it off my plate. <laughs> it's rude. She it is so up. rude. Sally has been known. She's a dumpster diver. I got to tell you. No, she, it's only when it used to have wire copy in the in the garbage can that we used to have wire copy, and they had one garbage can for wire copy, and someone put a package of donuts in it. Now, if there's a pizza box on top on top of a garbage can, I will open the pizza box and see if there's a piece of pizza. <laughs> in it. I still do that. 
What the? What's the difference? Now, have I had dysentery before? But yes, in 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 India. But it was because of a chicken salad sandwich on an airplane, not because of street food. All right. I never okay, get that's... sick off of street food. And Sally is one who will like come to your house for dinner, and, <laughs> and say, "Oh no 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 no." I can't eat. No, I, I, no, I'm only eating raw kale. Um, no, and she, I, I remember the time you were actually chewing on raw kale, and I thought, I think you're supposed to like maybe saute it first or just break it down a little bit. And she said, No, I got to. And you know, I can have a nut. Is that a nut? Okay, I'll take a cashew. Blah blah blah. This and that. And then she leaves your home and heads straight for McDonald's. This is what she does. <laughs> Tell me you don't. Because I'm an addict. Well, I'm, uh, 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 uh. And, and I, I once <laughs> had a very dear friend from Gateway Rehab. He died this past year, and he was amazing, Dr. Neil Capretto. Oh, yeah. And I can say this. And I was talking to him. We were doing um, an hour about opioids, and we were doing a Facebook Live afterwards, and he was part of it. And as we're going up, I, I talked to him that I would interview these opioid, you know, recovering opioid uh, addicts, and they would describe a high. And I've never taken opioids. I, when I didn't need to take a whole bottle of uh, Valium, I was done with it. They had given it to me as a muscle relaxant. I ended up taking all of it. And had to, it, I had to come down from it. It was hard, and I remember doing it because I went into a little bit of withdrawal. But that's what an addict does, and so I didn't need it any longer. But I'm like, oh gosh, this is. I mean, I looked forward to heart catheterizations because they would give me a drug, <laughs> and, and that catheterization might tell well, me something really awful. That's why I like my colonoscopies. Heart. I know. Well, I like exactly. Colon. I'm like, oh, yeah, oh my babe. God, there's a Stick drug, that right and they my just. Veins. I had I a cerebral angiogram. Oh, and, and, and was that cool? Well, no, it, they gave me the same drug, and yeah. they didn't give me enough. And I said, oh, my, and, and part of it is fentanyl. And I said, why didn't you give me more? Because we need you to help us, tell us, you yeah. know, talk to us. And I'm like, I, yeah, it's fine, but you should have given me more. So I'm an you addict. You know what? You know who needed more anesthesia recently? My mom. She had to have a gynecological procedure. <laughs> and, and, uh... I guess when you're 96, things just sort of are hard. They needed to put her out. And um, the anesthesiologist said, no, we're just going to give you a little bit. You're only going to be out for a little while. And so he does it. And clearly, it doesn't have any effect at all. Oh, they're, they're so she says, like she says, this old 96-year-old lady's lying on the table and saying, I'm still here. <laughs> what were we he talking about? It. That we got on this? And about food. We were talking about food. Why did we, why did I go down the, the... I don't know. Why do you, if you were to, you know what, you, might, you know that cartoon, The Family Circus, where sometimes they have the little guy and they trace his path throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Your head <laughs> is, I mean, and here is a map of Sally's head it's for the last... It's not ADD because I had For the last say, five minutes, and it's like... Woo, 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 woo. But I mean, it's just what we we all do. But you've got a, you got a hell of a head. I mean, she's smart as holy hell. No, no, and she, you're smart. Somewhat undisciplined head, I would say though. What what right? what is it? What okay, a, we, we go were ahead. Dumpster diving. We only have fifteen minutes. Are you counting the minutes? Are you want to you want to leave? No. Remind Sally, Clarence says that she is no longer on the news and can express a biased opinion. No, she can't. No, actually not, Clarence. Uh -uh. Yeah, she won't. No, because if you're if you're trying to raise funds for nonprofits, you really need to be middle of the road. You do. I I think with climate change, I think um, I I think it's okay now because it it, it you is. You want to raise money? You mean you want to serve in development for charity? You want to no, no, no. ask? people for money no i won't be asking because i, I can do I can. that for some and i hate it it's horrible no, i have said that i will accompany somebody oh. and tell and say why okay. this organization i couldn't even do that as okay. a news person but no no because so you're like someone, a lord as someone as have as, lunch with me and sally wiggin well no and, it's yeah just, because somebody pointed out to me when you do raise money in the non-profit world if you're going and making a big ask then they look at you and say, well, you need to, and I don't have 
No, I'm, you need I'm, to I'm, give. I'm, you can't be asking people if you're not giving. Yes, and right. I, I have. I mean, I'm going. I'm, I'm, I'm nicely. You know, I'm, I'm nicely She's set. positioned, but I'm. <laughs> Not like that, and so so you have to be. This is th- th- this whole year is going to have to be negotiated. No, she's got. You're, it's a huge transition. So let's do making. pros and cons. It's a huge. Transition. I can. I'm not getting. Me. Yeah, it is a huge transition. Huge. It is. And you're gonna. You should just give yourself time to slowly find your way. But I don't know anybody who can't sit still more than you. I mean, you're like, this, 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 20,000 things on your. So I think it's going to be hard for you to just. Let well, it's it hard down. for me to say to say no to people, and then I've said yes, and then I'm realizing now oh, I'm, yeah. I'm now I'm, I'm really there. and for my health, I really do need to start saying no. That's right. I do want to live. I at least want to live ten more years. That would put me at seventy six. Well, heck, <laughs> you got to ask for. A, you, here's the thing about asking for money. That's a that's a stupid ask. No, for a thing for year. You're going to live more than 10 more years. No, there's a lot. Well, yeah, no, you could go out and your dog could mistake you for someone else and, no, you know, and never rip your me. throat out. I'd like to see him bite somebody else. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. I've seen him bite a sleeve. Did I ever tell you that when we tested him to see if he would protect me? Yeah, he really it almost was amazing. killed. Yeah, no, was, no, the guy had the guy's what they call a decoy. It was yeah, but I yeah, the guy the guy those. actually hit me so hard in the sternum it knocked the air out of me and I I didn't even have a chance to say puckin which means get him get him what what I is did, it puckin puckin no puckin 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 yeah puckin and what I didn't mean, and I remember though? I was falling backwards and in slow motion I'd only had this dog for four weeks and I see this body launching itself through the air. And and the guy knew him and he it's it's and he puts the big sleeve up, but he did it and I mean he'd only lived with me for a while and he'd lived at this other place his whole well, except for the ten months he lived. He'd kill in for Europe. you, isn't that neat? Actually, do you know what? I remember reading a quote about German shepherds in a book and it said, I look in my German shepherd's eyes and I know that he will die for me. I look in my <laughs> <laughs> I look in my mutt's eyes. <laughs> And he probably would. Yeah, I think he would too. He probably would. But I've told you, I so always ha- I have a thing about German shepherds. It just makes me a little uncomfortable because I I do understand that. I okay. understand that because of the because um, of the, the Holocaust. Yeah, yeah, and all those and the, and the, they and they the terrorized people. my people. Uh, you know, the but Germans remember, used they, them. They've saved so well, many, fuck they've up. saved so many people. All right. In our military, I know. Really. Yes. Schutzhund. So say Schutzhund. 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 What does that Schutzhund. mean? It's the it's the it's killer the, dog. No, no, it's a, it was after World War One. We don't want to go down this road. After no. World War One, the Germans developed a test for, for a test for dogs that would be appropriate in 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 war or or in you know in security. In, in security and it, it involves obedience. It involves tracking. They have to do. That's a really important part. And it involves what they call protection mm-hmm. and the dogs that fit in. And then they would have competitions. And now they have the competitions all over the world, but mostly in Europe and the United States. And he was – and this guy that I have now was at one point – He was way up there. in the world. Yeah. I've never had a dog of this And he's caliber. sitting in a street uh, – he's sitting on Smithfield right now in Pittsburgh, PA. should not have said that. Barking at passersby. I hope nobody decided to to take a golf club or a yeah. A, um, they won't do that. In the, it's cold out. Dear Lynn and Sally, the two of you together are remarkable. There you go, Sal. I think that we old ladies should just move up and take over the world. We are so damn charismatic. We are. Would you consider staying on together all day? Well, that's what every I'm day. Some thirty-five year old guy will think I'm charismatic. I'm actually calm for the first time in over two years. This has calmed. Kathleen, it's I, I it's sort of like giving you know it's sort of like giving uppers to kids I, who are hyperactive. I I, th- it, I, it's a, it, I do I well I was addicted I to amphetamines calm. in um, college for a year and um, it did calm me down a little bit. But I have to tell you something that one of our photographers would do. He's the first one to do it. Uh, do you remember the movie Up? Where yeah. The dog had, it was a beautiful movie. had a, had a collar on and he could talk. And so the dog licks the face of one of the characters. 
I love you, and then go, squirrel. <laughs> so that's what, whenever I start one of these things, this guy, this guy, and then now the other photographers do it, did it, because I will miss them. And they, they'll go, squirrel. Squirrel, yeah. You know, I was walking my and I will dog miss yesterday. That. That's, and that's, some... a, that's a con, is there are these amazing photojournalists who, with whom you work, and right. you, they become your shrink. You know, they become like a, a work husband, and 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 Brian Caldwell was one of those guys. Um, um, I worked a lot with a guy named T.J. Hot, uh, Mike Lazorka, who was one of our main editors. I'm I'm, I'm missing people. Young guy that is going to teach me photography lessons. Uh, Dave Caruli, Carrie Toso was at the, the 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 Super Bowl with me the day of. The I just want to remind weekend. you that you're in dangerous territory here when you start naming names. It's like you know an acceptance speech at the Oscars. I know. Well, and, and I and just want Andy, to tell Andy you, Andy Cunningham. Yes, my God, the, uh, I told poor Andy every car accident I'd ever been in on the way to my last Steeler special. Um, um, then it was Gary Morris and and Dan Pratt. Oh my God, Dan Pratt has been there. Forever, Mark Fallone worked with you, worked with me. Now he's not in the business. Um, Chuck Cochran, Tim Lowell, uh, these guys are so amazing. Yeah. They get, they don't get the credit. I'm, I'm, I know I'm leaving somebody out that I've worked with, but um, darn. Um, Interesting. There are and all... Bernie Wodzinski, who's now retired, who was a great yeah. editor. These people behind the scenes, and then there are the, the people with the assignments. I. I I, All right. I, I am. It's dangerous territory. So, okay, you're going to... Everybody that with whom I worked at the station, really, all of them, you know, they're uh, really super people. And I stayed with one station. See, you're starting to airbrush them already. Because, like, when... No, I, I was on. the last when... 10 years, I have not been easy. I've been difficult. I Yes, been you a have. Bitch. And you have not been happy with... Um, yeah. Oh, I got to look. I've been... I would... Okay, let's not... I've been let's at, talk about. Yeah, ooh. let's not talk about. There have been. Roger you know what, says Sally been... really wants a thirty-five-year-old. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> no, I'm I, just kidding. I'm fifty-seven, and thirty-five seems too young for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. We're just really kidding. Really. Maybe a fifty-year-old. That'd be cool. Yeah, that would be. That'd be uh, yeah, fifty. I don't know. Sally is always available. I just want to say that's not true. Not anymore. No, I've made so many mistakes. I'm like, no, not making another mistake. Well, see, that's the thing. When you've made mistakes, and I made God so knows many I, mistakes. me too, the two of us, as brilliant as we are, are really idiot. I was going to say effing idiots. Are really idiots when it comes to, yeah, boy-girl relationships. Although, you can't flirt, but I I don't can. know how to flirt. No, I, I don't. am a world-class flirter. I know you are. I, my yeah, sister right. is, too. My sister's yeah. a flirt. And she that, said in one of, the, one of the articles written about me, Sally doesn't know how to flirt. No, you and don't. And I think that hurt me in this business because I didn't know how to flirt. I mean, to flirt as you do in the workplace. To, and, and How can you say it hurt you in this business? You had this extraordinary career. No, I, I think there, there came a time where it might have served me better if I could be a little less... Um, Bitchy? No. Um, uh, um, feminine feminine if wily? I could, I could, no, if I, if I had just been a little bit more gracious and been uh, more of a lady, more of a lady, because my mother raised me to be a lady. If I had been more of a lady... Oh, your mother. And, <laughs> your mother. And you know what? You know what? Your, I your have mother to tell threw you, her hands up in the air with, with everything, you. There was, a, there was a period of time where yeah. we had, and the person is gone, where we, we had some difficulties, and I was a target. And But I have to tell you, the, the, the fact that the company gave me Chronicle and let me continue with the Steeler Specials was a gift. Yes. And I'm going to start to cry. It was a gift. And I really, I really thank them for that. One of my favorite pieces, thanks to Kelly Fry, was Cannabis and Compassion. And it was about children with intractable epilepsy and why cannabis was important for them. It changed my life. It was a paradigm shift for me about quality of life. And, and the person who suggested that was our, our former news director, Justin Antonetti, and Kelly Fry. And uh, to this day, I thank them both for that. <laughs> And it won a regional documentary. Well, Sally and it was has just it was, Brian and I did it by we did it with a Jamie Bittner, this producer, and it is one of my favorite chronicles. Well, besides the dog chronicle. 
You've done so. I mean, you Sally. We've done so many. The Sal- 9/11 yeah, Chronicle. Yeah, but Sally has won every award in the business. Well, and, then there was and, the and Paul then Van Nossel, who's a great investigative reporter, who who he and 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 Jim Parsons ended up. The station got a Peabody, and I was a teeny, teeny, teeny part of that. So yeah, that's that's a con oh, that's because pretty. I won't be part of that anymore. That's a big con. That's a big con. A con. We're we're, we're saying pros and cons, not like con, like uh, you know. Uh, it's not polite to look at no, your no, watch. No, no, I just I don't want to get off on a tangent and screw pa, up the show. Pa, I'm feeling guilty. Pa, pa. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Um, oh, damn, though. I did have – I had a thought, and then I did lose it. Well, Sally and I are going to get through this entire show without mentioning our trip in California. That is true. We're going to do that. No, there were two oh. trips. There was a California trip. That's when – let's not go down that We way. won't tell the story of me not letting her out of the car. No, to that, was the, oh, that was the Pacific Northwest trip. You know, oh. Combining the two. That was a fighter pilot trip. <laughs> we were chasing a Top Gun guy <laughs> around the country. <laughs> Sally's always had these issues. I don't know. I used to be your, you know – Yes, wore me out. <laughs> okay, Sally, you had said uh, that you got maybe five trips. So, so where you, you know what's interesting? You're finally going. She's been everywhere in the world except where everybody else goes when they want to leave the country. They go to Europe. And you... I've been to Europe. Yeah, but you've never... Do, I mean... I've uh, never done the Mediterranean, no. So you haven't been to... I've never been to Venice. I've never been, been to, to Rome. Rome. I've never been to uh, um, Barcelona. Greece. I've never been to Greece. Um, You've never been. I've to never been nice. to Italy. You've never been to Nice. I've never. No, I've never. I've been to Paris. Yeah. yeah. I've been to Germany. Uh, yeah. I've never been to. I've been to England. I love England. I'm such an Anglophile. Really. I know you really are. Oh my God, I love the wedding. Oh God, I love oh, the wedding. Oh God, Barfold. Oh. No. <laughs> We are really. Uh, hey, do you very believe? Different. Do you believe that Meghan Markle and the Duchess of Cambridge are really feuding? You know, Markle and her and Harry have moved. They were supposed to be like living right there next to us. I could see and where she was went. would be jealous of of, of Meghan because the Queen apparently loves Meghan. And doesn't love. I think she does, but I think Megan. I think Megan, having been an actress, I mean, I think Kate Middleton is stunning, but uh, maybe it's not. But you know what? (laughs) Families have competitions. Yes, that's true. And and everyone has made so much of Megan and Harry's. I think they're such a nice. You know what's neat is, didn't you think when they were guys, young guys? That you felt sorry for Harry because he was this weird-looking ginger, and and and, and the bro- and and his older brother was this uh, you know gorgeous hunk, and then they're both gorgeous. No, ten years later, the gorgeous hunk is this bald, middle-aged, What's wrong with being you know, bald? totally uninteresting-looking human being, and Harry oh, is a stud. Yeah, he is a stud. Total stud. But so is oh god. I no, he's not. You can't think of his name, can you? William. Oh, thank you. I couldn't think of his name. I always thought that Prince Charles was really attractive. All right, that's a now you've gone too far. <laughs> there is no one who thinks Charles is attractive. What do you yes, mean? There, he's yes, there. Yes, he is. Did you see pictures of him when he was younger when they did that? They did, yeah. Oh he's my God. He's a dork with no, he ears was not. that I'm come sorry. out to here. And listen, listen. I'm. I have pretty high standards. <laughs> I do. Okay, Sally, we have one minute left. Here's what I want to. So, where are your your itinerary for this year? Where are you going to travel? You mean 2019? Yeah, I'm going to Baja. It's a Lindblad uh, National Geographic expedition. Baja. Baja. B A J A. The Sea Sea of Cortez. Yeah. To, to see, it's a photo expedition. One of the a really great whale expert is on it, and some really great photographers. And I'm so scared because I'm not a good photographer. Well, and so I you'll to try to you'll be get better. there. Then after that, then I'm going to Europe to to visit stud farms, um, um, in uh, Czechoslovakia, like like the Vienna. What kind the, of the, the, studs? Uh, horses, like the riding academy yeah. and. 
Why? It hor- to see horses, it, it, you know, and these, these, some of these stud farms are UNESCO, UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Then we're going to do the Mediterranean Odyssey. I've never been on a cruise ship except for a nature cruise ship, like National Geographic. Then, um, and then I'm going to Africa with a really neat person. Uh, you might, Julie Scardina. It's a trip. We're going to Uganda. I've climbed to see the elephants, uh, the elephants, the mountain gorillas in um, Rwanda, but this is Uganda. And then we'll go to uh, northern Kenya, Samburu, and and with these people, a lot of whom are conservationists, so it's really cool. And then I may I may be going to Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe with some people from the Pittsburgh Zoo, just for you know like a week um, for elephants, uh, elephant you know collaring perhaps. It, it's to, to to cut down on human elephant con- conflict. It's with this amazing organization. Go online, everybody. Victoria Falls Wildlife Trust. Go check out. You know, if you've got money to donate, they're amazing. Um, and our, our zoo is sort of like in partnership, not in partnership, but su- supports them. And then I'm going to, um, in, in, two th- in 2020, I'm going to be on the first, the maiden voyage of the endur- Endurance for Lindblad and National Geographic. It's going to the Arctic. In, in, in the Arctic, and it's an icebreaker. I've never been on an icebreaker because in the, in the summer, there's no more ice yeah. around Svalbard. So, yeah. so I'm going to. So, Sally's seeing the part of the world that we're totally, I mean, just everything's gone. You get, she's go, she goes to see these animals that we're destroying. She and we can to touch, in Baja, you can touch a gray whale because they apparently seek out human connection. I'm excited. Sally Wagan, ladies and gentlemen, I never even introduced her. She needs no introduction. She has started on the on a path now <laughs> that knows no particular end. Sally now is wandering, <laughs> unmoored, not sure where she's going, and I think we should all just take a moment to send our thoughts <laughs> and prayers her way to hope that this transitional period for her is a positive one. Transitional periods don't end. They just move into another transitional period. It is true. Toward death. And that's something that happens to all of us. You keep <laughs> thinking it's not going to happen to me, but well, I'm, we probably, all do. I'm probably closer than a lot of people my age. Oh, God. Okay, that Sally Wigan, I'm glad that I see a lot of you thought this was fun. I did too. And uh, Sally, will you come back and do it again? Oh, absolutely. But we're not going to talk about my career. We're just going to talk about stuff. Stuff. Yeah. But yeah, stuff. So uh, that's that. Tomorrow, I'm going to be joined by with Jesse Sage, right? Who is, I, you think I can see that, Lisa? Give me this. <laughs> Tomorrow, I got on this show, Jesse Sage. She is a Pittsburgh City Paper columnist. She's written for the Washington Post, uh, for Queer Pittsburgh. Uh, She's a teacher, and she currently works as a phone sex operator. What? (laughs) See, that's like, I I am really conservative when it comes to stuff like that. I know, you would be appalled. That that makes me very nervous. And she she co-hosts the Peep Show podcast. Uh, which brings together sex workers, artists, activists, journalists, and academics to talk about issues of sex and social justice. So I, I'm a little, yeah, I'm a little queasy like you are, but I, I, I let's. Uh, you believe she she has taught at several universities, but she does. She's a phone sex worker. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> <laughs> and she'll be on tomorrow. I can't wait. I'm going to be doing Sally's role. <laughs> I, 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 I'm always stunned at how, how um, socially conservative I am. Oh, yeah, she is. Did she see me start to wring my hand? Yeah, I know. She, 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 Oh, I, God, sex worker. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, all right. We do. We have to go. Uh, thank you very much, but sex tomorrow. Okay? Bye. Lynn Cullen Live, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and archived at pghcitypaper.com. 
The opinions expressed on Lynn Collin Live are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the viewpoints of Pittsburgh City Paper or its advertisers.